Welcome to the R video tutorial on working with dates in R part three. If you haven't watched the other two parts, you might want to jump back and watch them before you watch this one. All right, this is part of Statistics 321 at Virginia Commonwealth University, but anybody can use it. Okay, we're gonna use the RBOB WTI dataset just like before. It's linked in the description to the repository that has the data sets in it. We're gonna read this in, it's on my desktop, and we're going to convert it to the dates like we have before. So I'm gonna run this real quick so that everything's in here. Uh, you can see that from our, our console window down here, we have dates, but these dates really aren't dates, they're text, that's why we had to use this as date function. And now we can actually do some interesting things with, the, uh, with this dates. So the first thing we wanna do is maybe find the maximum date, which would be the end date, right? So we can just simply do max, and, like we would any other function or any other data set, rbob1, uh, no, we wanna do rbob dates, and if I run this, it should just spit out a date. And sure enough, there's our maximum date. So we can easily get the end date without having to do anything complicated. Uh, then we can do some interesting math on this. So uh, we might wanna create a sequence of dates from based off what we have. So create a sequence of dates and we're gonna say, let's let this thing here be our base date. Okay, so I'm gonna call this BD1. It's our base date. It's gonna be where we're gonna start. And what we can do is we can create an, a sequence of dates starting with BD1. Okay, so we're gonna do, here's our start. We're gonna do a length of, let's say seven uh, time periods and the time periods will be, how about weeks? Okay, and let's see what this does. So if I run this, we know, well, I gotta run this as well. We know that we start here at this 20, or uh, what is this? Uh, January 7th, 2016. Um, so if you see here, we go to the 14th, the 21st, the 28th, February 4th, the 11th, and the 18th. So it actually creates this sequence of dates for us, which is really cool. I, I think it's pretty neat that uh, R allows you to process dates like this in, in a very, very, very easy manner. So just keep that in mind that you can do this from a very, very easy standpoint. Uh, so creating dates, we can find the mix, man, uh, minimum dates and things like that. You can find the average date if you want to. So you could say uh, average date. Well, let's just put summary dates. Okay, so let's say we wanted the average date so I'll put mean date uh, and it will be equal to the mean of our RBOB dates. And we'll see what that one comes out to be. Um, we can see the value itself directly. So here's the mean date. Looks like August 11th, 2009. We can do the min date. So we can again do RBOB.dates. And this will give us pretty much anything we want. Okay, I wonder if it'll give us the IQR. Let's see if it does that. RBOB dates, give this a run. And notice, tells you how many dates are in the middle 50%, but it's doing subtraction. So it gives you how many days. So there are 2,338 days in the middle of this thing, the middle 50%. So this data set's really long, by the way. Uh, so that shouldn't be any surprise that it's gonna be that big. Okay, so there's lots of things that you can play with with these dates, and, and working with dates is often difficult. So just keep that in mind as we're going through uh, and looking at different types of data sets that dates can often pose a problem because they're kind of deceptive in, in the sense that you think they're one thing. For example, you think it's a date, but it's really text or you think it's a date and it's really a factor. Uh, and so it can be deceptive when you actually try to work with them. So make sure you're aware of how to convert things to dates and, and what kind of functions you can apply to these dates to make your life easier. All right, so now we can move to the next video.